Oh, hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and a couple days ago I made a video where I talked about the largest computer crash in history basically occurring. Now, ladies and gentlemen, since then I've basically come back from my trip. I was actually out there with Oompaville. I was hanging out with a few creators, uh, Wendigoon, uh, Brandon Buckingham, Tom, Dirty Tom, for instance, uh, and Chris. We were basically filming a lot of content, okay, for a future little uh, collaborative venture we're doing. But in that venture, during that time, the entire world crashed because of one big IT error, okay? And worst, the hospitals. Some hospitals, for instance, actually started having complete crashes. For instance, one individual, one nurse, says, Our hospital is fully down due to a crowd strike issue. No phones, no computers, no safety nets. It's an all-hands-on-deck kind of day. I hope our patients remain safe. Now, I don't want to talk about just monetary damages because when you when you literally just read that, okay, you're talking about possible loss of human life, which there is no amount of money that obviously can, you know, correlate to that. So again, one of the things is, is how much, how many people were actually affected? How many machines were gone? According to uh, some of the people over at Microsoft, they kind of went up and said it probably was somewhere around 8.5 million machines actually going down. Now, to this day, we're still actually fighting this issue on because uh, this requires manual intervention at each, at each individual computer, as far as I understand. It was a remote update, but obviously the update crashed the system. So, you know, an IT engineer is going to need to go every single to every single terminal and basically remove the offending files that have caused these computers to constantly crash. And in fact, speaking of just damages, if you're looking at the airline industry, Around 6,855 flights were canceled. And that's not just cancellations. That's them dealing with new flights on that day, and then the flights they already had to cancel have to get fucking rolled over. Flying back, I'll tell you right now, I dealt with at least two hours of delays. I felt lucky that I was dealing with just two hours of delays. There were people that lost an entire day's worth, two days worth of travel, okay? They literally are not able to get to their destination. Anybody who had a vacation set aside, yeah, that got completely fucked up out of nowhere because of this one company sending out a bad update. There's like one video that showcases how the flights were grounded. Like you can watch in seven seconds, just like all these flights basically just going, all right, get to these airports, sit down, come on. <laughs> it is all fucked up. So yeah, it's not good, all right? This is not a good situation, okay? There's tons of money that has been put into the line, possible lives being lost, millions of computers being hit. What is the financial impact to CloudStrike, for instance? Well, let's look at their let's look at their actual stock price real quick. Now, CloudStrike right now is trading at $265. They went down 13% today. So if they actually open up their five day, they were trading literally July 17th. $369, and now, boom, it's dropped 30% in the last five days, okay? So that's obviously not good, and the thing about it is, uh, stocks kind of ebb and flow, so a company that may go down now probably might shoot back up, but I think the damage is done, all right? They've pissed off not just governments or people, but they've pissed off some of the operating system vendors, obviously like Microsoft. So let's talk about what actually happened in this situation. Now, during the day of all of this, there was a serious coverage on the situation where people were just sharing random analysis. So one that looked pretty interesting to a lot of people was this CrowdStrike analysis where they said a null pointer from the memory unsafe C++ language was actually found. And uh, this uh, stack trace dump, which wasn't actually a stack trace dump, by the way, uh, ended up being sort of like this one rumor mill culprit that was flying around. And then there was obvious, like, you know, allegations of maybe there's a DEI hire. Now, as much as I hate this name, Ian Miles Chong, this guy is a Malaysian that cosplays being an American, I guess is the safest way to put it. Uh, absolutely, absolutely disliked by pretty much everyone in the entire space. In fact, it's actually funny how no matter what side of the spectrum of politics or, or anything you're on, everyone just loves to clown on this dude. Anyways... He said, remember the joke about feminist engineers causing a bridge to collapse? That's DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion from my understanding, and it isn't a joke. Look at Boeing, Disney, the Secret Service, CrowdStrike. What a wild comparison to be throwing these four companies in, Jesus Christ. 
Somebody's like, what's the story behind that incident? Sloppy programmer, QA, everything. DEI caused this. Now, I don't know if DEI is code for minority in this situation, but this is a very systemic issue, one that I will get into. Now, obviously, other engineers also jumped into the situation, and one that I will show you is somebody that actually has their technical understandings and chops about the situation. Now, Patrick Wardle is the founder of the Objectives C Foundation, and they actually talked about the CloudStrike situation in depth here. Now, before we jump into this too, these all sys files that you're seeing over here, these are the tainted files that were causing the issue, right? Of what they dub Clown Strike. I, I downloaded this from Patrick Wardle. Now, to give an idea, the CS agent was communicating with these, you know, individual files right here, the C-00000291 dash blah, blah, blah files. And there was one error here that was causing a logic error onto the operating system being Windows that was causing this super serious issue that started crashing computers all around. So what he basically said was those same files that I talked about, deleting them fixes a crash, which obviously implies that whatever's within them actually matters. But do their content as their contents change between systems? So according to, you know, Kevin Beaumont said that the sys files that are causing the issue are actually channel update files. They cause that top level CS driver to crash because the formatting is invalid, okay? So what they had said was channel updates, which bypass client staging controls and was rolled out to everyone regardless. So a few IT folks who had set their CS policy to ignore latest version confirmed this was bypassed as this was not the actual content update that was meant for the actual end user. Now, to give an idea, obviously, we all know that the software used and what we were looking at all these sys files to was in reference of something known as CloudStrike Falcon, which has been around for a fair bit. It's basically one of the big players in the cybersecurity world, protecting a lot of the biggest companies from possible threats. Obviously, it came out that throughout the weekend, the biggest threat was actually just them. So they say they protect 298 of the Fortune 500, 538 of the Fortune 1000, and 53 out of, or sorry, 43 out of 50 states. And of course, what's really scary is they say six out of the 10 healthcare providers, which obviously, you know, given the first actual mention, the first on the ground witnessing from somebody in that field, not good to see, okay? So basically what they said was they released a sensor configuration updates to Windows systems, right? So what sensor configuration updates are is they're ongoing parts of a protection mechanism for that Falcon software. The configuration updated triggered a logic error resulting in a system crash and a blue screen on impacted systems. So again, it wasn't a cyber attack. So when people were looking into anything right over here, uh, anybody that looked into those configuration files, they were referred to as channel files. And they're part of the behavioral protection mechanism that is used by their sensor software. So updates are a normal part of the operation and they actually occur several times a day in response to new tactics that are basically been discovered by the team at CloudStrike. So again, when they gave the technical details, those drivers, those C-00000291 that end with those system config extensions, even though they end with that sys extension, they are actually not even drivers. So what they said was channel 291 controls how Falcon evaluates name pipe execution on Windows systems. So name pipes are used for normal inter-process or inter-system communications on Windows. So the update that occurred 409 uh, coordinated, you know, universal time was designed to target new things using common C2 frameworks in cyber attacks. So la di la di la, they set out an actual update that you won't, you know, obviously was causing a bit of an error within the Windows operating system that was then causing blue screen crashes. And because it was causing blue screen crashes, it wasn't as simple as, hey, can we remotely access our millions of Windows terminals around the world or even at a given location like the Los Angeles International Airport and just, you know, delete this update or roll it back. No, you actually have to individually go to these machines or if luckily you're in the case of, you know, virtual machines or virtual deployments, you may be able to just roll back to an earlier state if provided you have that to begin with, 
And this process, you know, if you're just sitting at one computer, I can do it right now in front of you. In fact, CloudStrike was basically showcasing how to do this on various systems. But imagine, you know, doing this process that would take anybody, you know, a standard amount of time, you know, maybe a couple minutes and extrapolate that by the amount of computers that have been potentially affected. IT people were freaking the fuck out, clearly so. And, uh, you know, it was not a situation where I think even whatever they were paid in overtime was worth the amount of stress they had to deal with, especially as this is still ongoing. So obviously because this is a Microsoft issue, and not to say that this is entirely just them, this was even discovered in Linux as well too. The guys over at Red Hat basically talked about how back in June of this year, by the way, last month, talked about how even the Linux operating system version 5.14 was going through some actual kernel panics because of that Falcon sensor process. Now, obviously this is a bigger news story because Windows is more used by everyone in the world around. So clearly the issues that are found underneath Windows is going to affect the world even more. So in this case, Microsoft came out and said, listen, we did not fuck up, okay? It was not our issue. This one company, CloudStrike, released a software update that basically screwed IT systems globally. So even if it wasn't their fault, because of how large of an attack or how large of a massive issue this is, we're gonna go out and help in every way possible. So Microsoft basically released a USB tool where you can just burn it and do this stuff quickly, obviously to save time. And beyond you know, them helping out when they obviously don't have to, they're giving all their financial support, all their tech support possible in order to get this going, which is good to see, right? It's obviously a great thing. And obviously they're doing it because it makes everyone in the space look bad. It's just a bad situation. Now, like I said in the beginning, it's pretty much reported that a lot of the world pretty much relied on this software CloudStrike to protect themselves from hackers. And a lot of big industries like hospitals, like healthcare are actually still struggling. And it's one of those things where it will take quite literally days to actually reel in from a bad update that had happened. Imagine if this was some serious cyber attack or something of that nature. It's good that people found things quickly, but it makes people wonder the question of why this actually even happened in the first place. To even go to the idea of a hospital situation, when you're looking at one example like sterilizing, you know, practices in a hospital, disinfection and sterilization of even, you know, uh, items or like, you know, things you would need at a hospital, a lot of that logging and a lot of that, you know, monitoring is done via computers. And if your computer is having an issue, then having unsterile equipment or equipment that you can't guarantee is sterile, you know, that should be logged electronically is scary. You could set, you could spread some serious infections around. These are a lot of things you have to think of when a computer goes down. How does this eventually butterfly effect itself into something actually super duper serious? Now you go to CloudStrike and I was looking at, you know, what about them and the competition? And I swear this is where it's super goofy. Right, like you go to their actual thing, they compare themselves, Microsoft, <laughs> burdensome operations drive up TCO, Palo Alto networks, hard to deploy, hard to use, hard to manage. <laughs> and it seems an update doesn't break one thing. Sentinel one, weak coverage, can't stop breaches. Uh, Splunk, too slow for modern adversaries. Imagine a car company, like imagine going to Mercedes Benz and they're like, BMW shouldn't buy their cars. They got Elriz, yeah, Rip Bozo. Poor, like imagine if you had just every, like the amount of cattiness in the computer industry actually just continuously shocks me sometimes. Like this is the most insane comparison schematic that I've seen. But yeah, I'm pretty sure CrowdStrike is not laughing given the fact that they have all eyes pointed at them. Now, one of the things that people kind of wondered and asked is how does this kind of stuff happen? So to give an idea, first off, let's talk about like regulatory requirements. Like if you're an IT firm, financial firms like that, for instance, uh, you know, you probably need certified pieces of software. And looking at CloudStrike, they match up all the compliance and certifications imaginable. So whether you go from FedRAMP to HIPAA to the NSA CIRA, and of course, it's not just, you know, North America, you're talking about the UK, you're talking about Asia, you're talking about global standards. 
This is basically a tick that a lot of companies check to make sure that when they're audited by regulatory bodies, they can say, yeah, we have antivirus software. And CloudStrike was one of those easy ticks. Basically go to their company, purchase their software, and then you could check that, yes, we are taking care of our cybersecurity, not just for ourselves, but for any customer or user that works with us in the future. So you got regulations that you have to match up for, and this is that certified safe piece of software. Obviously, there are other you know, use cases, but this was one of the most popular, and by being one of the most popular, just kept exponentially growing in users. So obviously, the big issue was CloudStrike sent a bad update, which caused issues. So this is where things are gonna get kind of into a speculatory lens here, okay? Why would a company as large as CloudStrike and somebody that's been doing this for a long time, you know, push an update? First off, this was no one's fault other than CloudStrike, okay? For a lot of these actual organizations, especially airline groups, it really feels like this actual update was Leroy Jenkins pretty much onto every system out there. Now I would imagine, you know, quality assurance probably would have picked up this issue because the amount of blue screens that have been occurring and still are occurring probably have a pretty high rate of failure even in their actual production environment. It really feels like with the amount of people that received this pretty much near instantaneously and not through a slow drip feed, uh, pretty much shows me, at least, that this was just forced through, whether it be that they were trying to fix up a massive critical issue that they had, or one very crucial step at CloudStrike was skipped, this eventually ended up sending out to systems, and once it was sent out and those systems were restarted, or even if they didn't have to restart, one issue was causing, causing that logical error, yeah, it was all over from there. It was all done. One thing that is not speculation is there's no like magic nuke button at any office which says just deploy it everywhere, right? There are still a tons of people that are responsible. I would say the CEO who should have overseen, you know, not just the board that they're working with, but all the middle management and everyone responsible for their chains in releasing all of the software to production environments should be responsible the most. The CEO should be the one that's stepping down because ultimately under their purview, this fuck up effectively occurred. It's not just one sole programmer's fault. Remember, faults in programming can happen, all right? You know, making software, developing software, maintaining software is incredibly difficult. And obviously it wasn't just one person who decided to deploy this update. There should have been other eyes and other people watching. But instead, we're looking at one of the largest crashes in human history happening right now in front of our eyes. I wasn't joking last time when I said, you know, Y2K was kind of that one meme that everyone kind of referred to back in 1999. You know, the day when the clock turns January 1st, 2000, the entirety of the world's computers are going to crash on us. This is, if not a small taste, but a very sizable one still, of what would have happened if computer systems crashed in massive sectors all around the world. See, you and I are fine, but imagine if, you know, parts of the internet start crashing. Parts of airlines start going offline, healthcare workers, your banks. The world pretty much is reeling from actual billions of dollars in damages, and it wasn't even a cyber attack or a solar flare or an EMP or something cool. It was just one bad update sent out from one of the largest cybersecurity providers out there. So hopefully today you learned something. Hopefully today you realized just how, you know, one little domino can cause a massive issue. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it, I am out.